everyone, I am Jenny Dietrich. I am back with the second in our series on how to write blog posts that get read and shared. As a quick reminder, I am uh, Jenny Dietrich on Twitter. I run a digital communications firm based in Chicago. I am the lead blogger and author of Spin Sucks and co-author of Marketing in the Round. So I've written a little bit of content in my day and I have some tips for you. <laughs> Um, the first series we talked about how to generate and capture blog post ideas. Today we're going to talk about tricks to write popular blog posts and then subsequent series will go from there. Um, so let's talk about the tricks that you need to generate lots of readers, lots of shares, which then in turn generates that ever valuable link back to your site uh, that Google loves and wants to know or uses to, to uh, determine whether you are an expert on the topic or not. So. Probably in 2010, I want to say, Chris Brogan uh, blogged about his three words for 2010 or maybe 2011. And in his blog post, he talked about uh, that rather than setting New Year's resolutions and these big lofty goals that everybody writes and then not, never does anything with, rather than do that, write three words that you are going to use for the coming year. And you'll see that. Um, Susie wrote her for 2011 her words were intersections freedom and curiosity and what she did is she explained what those three words were and how she did against them in 2011 and then going into 2012 she talked about what her three words were for 2012. Um, it's a really nice idea in terms of how to sort of hold yourself accountable. It works both business and personal. On Spin Sucks I write about um, our business goals for sure every year and then I go back and compare how we did against them. Um, people are always really interested in that kind of stuff. The debate. So Paul Sutton, who's in the UK, um, he and I fundamentally disagree on just about everything. He's the kind of friend that if I told him the sky was blue, he would tell me I, I was wrong and it was green. So literally we disagree about everything. And part of it is just in fun too. But um, he came to me a couple of years ago and he said, I think that Pinterest um, for business is just a flash in the pan. And I was like, you're wrong. You're totally wrong, of course, because we disagree. And we both wrote blog posts about it, the Pinterest debate between two friends. Um, he, he posted it on his blog. I posted it on mine. And then I had a poll. We both had a poll in our blog um, that asked what people thought and let people vote. I would just like to say that I won. Um, but it's a fun idea and he and I do that about once a year. We're actually doing one pretty soon on the future of um, communications agencies versus freelancers. So uh, it's really fun because you do that cross pollination where you get access to each other's networks and readers. Um, and it sort of creates a fun environment where people get to agree or disagree in a very professional way. Then oh, I have these fancy builds in here. We look at the good. So. You know, it's, it's easy to talk about the bad and the ugly, which I'll talk about here in a second, but it's easy to talk about those things and um, have everybody pile on. What's not so easy is talking about the good and what people do really, really well. FedEx um, had a social media crisis where a video camera was caught, one of, his, one of their drivers throwing a package, which happened to be a laptop, over the fence instead of going, going through the security and going up to the door. The way that... FedEx responded was brilliant, and so we talked. We talked about how what the issue was and why it was why it became a crisis, and then what FedEx did really, really well. Then, of course, you have the bad. Is that next? Yes. <laughs> um, if you're wrapped up into the social media world, I'm sure you heard this this uh, case study last August from Union Street Guest House, and what they did was they were caught. Uh, saying that they would charge guests $500 if they or any of their friends or friend, family left a negative review. Now, of course, you can't do that. You also can't incentivize for good reviews. So it became this really big social media crisis for them. And what was interesting about it is they did not handle it well. So we talked about what, what happened, what the situation was, and what Union, House, what Union Street Guest House could have done differently to sort of save themselves. And then, of course, you have the ugly, which people love. Um, Bob LeDrew, who's in Canada, talked about newsjacking. And there is obviously a really good way to newsjack. When the lights went out in the Superdome during the Super Bowl when it was in New Orleans, Oreo did, and probably everybody knows this case study by now, but Oreo did a phenomenal job of sort of, of picking up on that trend and saying, oh my gosh, well, you could still dunk in the dark, and here we are, Oreo, the lights will come on soon. 
There are also really bad examples of um, newsjacking, and it's things like what Philip Seymour Hoffman's death taught me about marketing, or what the Super Bowl um, non-pass to Marshall, Marshawn Lynch taught me about marketing. It's those kinds of things that don't equate, and that's what Bob LeDrew talks about in this blog post, is the difference between news, hack, news hook, which is actually really good, and news jacking, which tends to not be so good. <clears throat> then you have the lists. Um, Nate Riggs actually does a really nice job. He uses Listly to create lists. People love lists, and it's funny because everybody talks about, oh, I hate these lists. Lists are baloney. I can't believe you're doing another list of the, no of the most popular women on social media, blah, 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 blah. But they're super effective, and that's why people do them. So I would recommend not shying away from them just because they really are effective. You also can do research-based lists. So peer-to-peer -peer professional forum looks at the top 10 programs by total gross revenue every year and looks at, okay, so you have the Relay for Life, you have Race for Cure, you have Heart Walk, you have March for Babies, and how much revenue they each generate. So it's a nice list that's based on research versus popularity, which is coming next, um, that tells you, that talks about, you know, that will help you uh, bring new readers to your blog because the people who are listed are going to come to your blog and they're going to share it. They're going to bring their networks to it, so it's a nice way to do that. And then, of course, you have the popularity contest um, list. Oops, go back, go back. Ah. Sorry, popularity contest. No. Nope. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Pushing the wrong buttons here. Um, Kim Garst actually really did a really nice post. She took the like a girl hashtag. Um, that's really popular right now, which I thought was done really well. And she talked about the top 30 women in social media who are rocking it like a girl, um, and then listed the, those 30 women. So again, in the comments you'll read that people are like, Ugh, I can't believe you have another list, but she now has 30 women that have come to her blog, shared her content, brought their readers and networks to her blog, and so even though people complain about it, they work really, really well. Uh, the something of the year. So, you know, People Magazine has their um, oh, what's the right term for it? More, most handsome uh, actor. That's not the right term, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, you can look for, you know, the top 99 social media marketing blogs, or you can do the top 10 science researchers in your industry, or the top 10 engineers in your manufacturing facility, or something like that. So think about the something of the year that you can give an award to people in order to bring them to your to your blog to um, read the content. Book reviews work really, really well. Um, this is Paula Kiger. She wrote a book review. I actually think this is book. This is on Spin Sucks, I think. Um, but she does a, a book review every month. Karina Mania at Nuts About PR also does a nice book review every month. Um, so the, the trouble with that, of course, is you have to actually read the book to write a book review, but it works really well because, again, the author is going to come to your blog, they're going to read it, they're going to share it, they're going to bring your, their networks to you, and typically authors have pretty big followings and networks, so it's something that you want to think about. One of the things that we do instead of book reviews is interviews. So we do an author Q&A simply because I just can't read <laughs> that many business books. Um, so we, we actually invite an author to hang out on Spin Sucks for an hour. It's the third Wednesday of every month, I believe. Third Wednesday, yep. Yeah. Um, and in the comments for an hour, they answer questions from our readers. And so what it does is it really engages our community, but it also brings their community to the comments. And it's sort of like a Twitter chat, but it happens all in real time in the blog comments. And then you have a transcription of it. It's really, it's, it's really nice. Live Fire allows us to do it. And I really, really enjoy it. Uh, Parables, I love what Paris Review does. They look at authors every quarter and they really dig deep. So they, this one on Stephen King, which by the way, if you're a Stephen King fan, I highly recommend you read this if you've not. Um, it's issue 189. I don't know what the date was. It's a few years ago, but um, they dig deep into stuff that not normal, that these authors aren't normally asked. So think about that from your perspective in terms of what kinds of things can you ask industry experts in influencers in your industry that um, you can dig deep into and ask them kinds of th the kinds of things that they wouldn't be normally be asked, like um, how do you run your business or what's it like to work on the manufacturing floor or um, you can tell what's top of mind for me right now, um, or 
you know, when you're working in the lab with these spoons, what do you, what's the access that you have or something like that. So you can, you, there's lots of opportunity. Um, trends, you know, everybody, yeah. this is another one that everybody complains about and says, ugh, it's November, all the trends are going to come out, but I'm telling you what, it works really, really well. The future of whatever your industry is, trends and predictions for 2016 is something you can do later this year. Um, look at the kinds of things, I mean, you can make predictions based on your expertise. Uh, it doesn't have to be that you're looking into a crystal ball and you know, it's just things that you're seeing that might come about. Um, you know, like for me, I'm looking at this, which is a new social network, um, Elo, which is new that sort of has fizzled out. So you can look at those kinds of things and say, well, this is interesting. It might be something that we can look at for the, the following year. And then you have the Smarty Pants. And Ike Piggott, who's in Alabama, wrote a blog post called The 11 World Words Guaranteed to Generate Killer Search in tra Engine Traffic and Clicks. If you'll notice, that phrase is 11 words. And when you click on it, that's all there is. There isn't a blog post with it. So he was a smarty pants in terms of here are the 11 words guaranteed to, to generate killer search engine traffic and clicks. And guess what? People clicked on it and it did generate a ton, a ton of traffic. And what it did, I think, for people who didn't already know Ike is it either made them love him or hate him. Um, I think it's fabulous because I love that kind of sen that kind of sense of humor, but there may be people who don't love that. So you have to think about the kinds of things that you're trying to do as well. And with that, I believe we will move on to get people to share your blog posts, then content hubs from there and content distribution. I'll see you soon.